Hello and hi everyone, my name is Johnny Q. Bang Heng, my metric number is 7243 and today we would like to present the theories related to diplomacy and international relations. Before I start with my presentation, I would like to let my partner introduce himself and briefly describe what we are going to present today. Hi everyone, my name is Leah Choi, metric number 71688 and just like my partner said earlier, today we will be presenting theories related to diplomacy and international relations. So, without further ado, let's continue to the next slide. So, for today's presentation, there will be three major theories related to diplomacy and international relations that will be presented. Those are Marxism theory, realism theory, last but not least, liberalism theory there are total six aspects of today's presentation that will be presented today the first one is the origin of each theory the second one is the instruments of influence in each theory next is the characteristic features of each theory and the fourth one is the strengths and weaknesses of each theory in relation to contemporary international affairs. The next one is the significance of each theory in shaping today's diplomacy and international relations. And last but not least, how can each theory help us to understand the globalizations of current world politics? Thank you Stanley Achoy for the brief introduction of this presentation today. Now, I would like to move on to the, our first theory, which is Marxism theory. It is a theory named after Karl Marx himself, and it is a theory where a worker revolution to overturn capitalism in favor of communism. Marxism first came into the public limelight in 1848 through a document dubbed the Communist Manifesto, written by Karl Marx himself and assisted by Friedrich Engels. Next, we're moving on to the instrument of influence for this theory. The first one is Marxism doctrine and knowledge that the close interrelation between different relations of each class to the means of production is the main reason for the class conflict. The second one is the theory of the social problems created by unfair imbalance through economic and social revolution. Now, we're moving on to the characteristic features of the Marxism theory. There are four characteristic features of this theory. The first one is all the tenets of Marxism are particular and not general. Marxism is not science or philosophy. It is simply a critical and practical analysis of existing society. The third characteristic is the central subject of Marxism is capitalist society and the last one is its chief aim of the theory is not simply to analyze the capitalist state of society, but to change it as well. After viewing and done some analysis of Marxism theory, my partner and I discovered a few strengths and weaknesses of this theory. First, let me start with its strengths. It tends to create a system of true equality and it offers benefits to the society. Next, it helps with capitalism and it reduces the tendency of debt. Last strength that we discovered is it protects the right of unions. Now, we're moving on to its weaknesses. The first one is it wants to abolish private property and economic activity is not sustainable. The third one, it reduces the incentive people have to do their work with creativity and excellence. And the last one is Socialist form of government have to be more coercive and democratic capitalist forms. That's all for the strengths and the weaknesses. The next part of this presentation is the significance of the Marxism theory. International relations is not just about the foreign policy or the behavior of the politicians, but it is more about the survival, reproduction, technologies, and labor. Marxism question either the IR is anarchy for realists or 
it is just an international society for the English schools. He argues that such concepts are problematic. Marxists are critical of the fixed aspect of borders because they create relation of dependency and inequality between peoples. How can Marxism help us to understand the globalization of the world politics? First one is to understand the inherent dynamic of a society as a whole and not only their functionality as separate units. Marxism can serve as a mode of analysis examining the relationship between ownership, power and social change. And the last one is Marxism helps to understand the dynamic of politics and its entity. The second theory for today's presentation is about Realism Theory. Realism Theory was developed by Hans J. Mojento. He was influenced by the Protestant theologian and political writer Reynold Neighbor as well as Ops. This theory uh, focused on selfishness and power of human. Hans used lust as the center of his picture of human existence. It was believed that this theory began a serious field of research in the United States uh, during and after the World War II. There are total three instruments of influence for the realism theory that we have found. The first one is that it was considered as the most enduring approaches in the international relations. Secondly, events in the international politics make sense and can be explained through relatively clear and immediate principle. And lastly, thriving approach in the broad fields of political studies and political theory make this theory uh, very popular among many philosophers in its time. Next, we will be talking about the characteristics features of the realism theory. Firstly, this theory illustrates social problems and inequalities between social class. Next, it is a form of resistance to the romanticisms. Next, this theory criticizes the Catholic Church and the bourgeois. And last but not least, this theory is more psychological analysis of the human behavior. Now, we move on to the strengths and weaknesses of the realism theory in relation to contemporary international affairs. First, we observe the strengths of this theory. Firstly, this theory can explain the increasing success of science over time because the theories are converging on the truth. Secondly, these theories preserve the view that scientific explanation provide unobservable cause of observed phenomena. And lastly, these theories are approximately true to the fact that observations depend on them does not weaken their probability of objective truth. On the other hand, the weaknesses of this theory are there are no way to know whether your theory corresponds to an independent reality. Next, there is no non-vague theory of approximate truth. And lastly, the truth of non-observational part of theories is irrelevant to theory acceptance. Next is the significance of the realism theory in shaping today's diplomacy and international relations. First, we start off with the development of realism in international relations was encouraged by the policies that arose from unregulated competition of states. Next, realism theories perceive interest and powers in international community as a variable content. And last but not least, the universal moral principle cannot be imposed to the action of other countries. So, how can realism can help us to understand the globalizations of the world politics of the current situations? There are two answers that we have found for these questions. The first one is that realism is the main incentive that enable political realisms to find toward 
international landscape is the concept of interest described in terms of power. Next, realism theory also suggests that globalization will breed suspicions, vulnerability, and conflict because more interdependent people and states becomes, the more the secure they will be. The last theory that we have selected is called liberalism theory. Philosopher John Locke is often credited as the founding member. This theory told us that every man has natural right to life, liberty, and property. Government must not violate this thing. Philosophy based on liberty, consent of God, the govern, and equality before the law are very popular among the Western philosophers and the economists. Like the other two theories that have been presented before, the liberalism also have its instrument of influence. Why this theory so popular amongst the philosophers and the economists around the world? Because the theory not only support individual but the group as well. For example, they support free trade, free markets, limited government, and the individual rights that supported by this theory is civil rights and human rights including freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and even freedom of religion. How can we recognize the liberalism theory? Well, to recognize this theory, we must know about its characteristic features. The first one is every individual has the same opportunity. The second one, the government is determined by approval and the law applies to this theory. The last one is this theory does not accept the teaching of dogmatism. Now, let us talk about the strength and the weaknesses of the liberalism theory. First, let's talk about its strength. The first strength of this theory is the theory enables society to maximize its return from the scarce resources. Two, they are costs associated with violating laws of economic, which according to liberals are law of nature. Alternative to liberalism could be a society where everyone loses in absolute terms. The weaknesses of this theory is, this theory basic assumptions are unrealistic. This theory not a comprehensive approach to understanding IPE. The third one is, liberals artificially separate economics from the other aspect of society, and it ignores the justice of economic activity. The last one is, analysis of liberal economies tends to be static. To continue the presentation, I would like to present the significance of liberalism theory. The first one is, the, the theory constructs institutions that protect individual freedom by limiting and checking political power. The second one is limit military power by such means as ensuring civilian control over the military. And the last one is to add a further limitation on the use of power by shaping our understanding of what types of behavior are appropriate. Now, how can liberalism help us to understand the globalization of world politics? Well, the first one Liberalism as a political doctrine that takes protecting and enhancing the freedom of the individual to be the central problem of politics. The second one, liberalism believes that government is necessary to protect individuals from being harmed by others. But they also recognize that government itself can pose as a threat to liberty. I think that's all from us today. And before I end this presentation i would like to thank you for listening to us and i hope this presentation will help you understand more about the theories related to diplomacy and international relations thanks for watching stay safe and stay healthy bye